Okay, good morning everybody. So I'm I'm Ses Gim. I'm from the from Intel uh, in in the CTO office. Um, I'm I'm doing system architecture, and today I'm going to be uh, presenting to you guys uh, the the work that uh, Sunku and Sindura uh, they have been doing uh, within the team. Uh, they couldn't come, so I I'm coming and and representing the the, the work that they do uh, within the the CTO office and NEX. So um, today we're going to be talking about, about uh, healthcare, about Mac, about edge, edge to cloud, security, what are the foundational elements that we are working on in terms of edge architecture. And, and basically we're going to be looking at uh, some uh, architectural elements that we are looking from uh, hardware and, and, and software perspective and the directions that we are looking at as, as a company in, in, this, in this area. So um, let's let's get started a little bit on the on the problem statement or the or the context of the of the presentation today. So if you guys, uh, I, I don't know how much you are into uh, healthcare, if it's your day-to-day -day job or or your day-to-day -day modern orchestration system architecture. So regardless to that, it's um, I'm just going to briefly touch on, on on some of the interesting opportunities that are happening in in this in this area. So. If you are familiar, when you go to the to a hospital, right? So you go into the different processes uh, from admission to uh, to the treatment to uh, when when you go home, continue the, the 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 process maybe at home. There is labs, analysis, doctors, lot of papers, lots of analysis. And if if you look at at how today's hospitals are are, are transforming, there are many of the things that maybe two or three years ago uh, were done by by someone looking at at uh, some analysis or maybe processing some data. Today, all, all those things are being uh, automated, right? Or on the process of being automated, and that basically goes from the as I was saying, like uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk about that later. But uh, in natural language processing or uh, or uh, do, do X-ray and, and, and AI analysis for, uh, for imaging, right? So there are multiple areas in a, in a, in a healthcare domain where you could apply uh, technology to make things more effective and, and more efficient. And just as an example, so two days ago, uh, I was talking to a, to a doctor that they, he's basically doing imaging all, all, the, all day long. And he was telling telling me that in the in the in the hospitals today they give they are giving them an amount of minutes to process uh, one X right, and depending on the complexity of that patient, you the time var var varies right, and and sometimes it's, it's complex for them to keep the throughput that they have to do, and obviously during the during the day they get tired and 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 they can't get everything so. Anything, any method that allows them to do this type of processing faster or identify things that at the first chance they wouldn't look at, uh, that's, uh, that's, that's very critical for, 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 the, for them. So the, obviously, like when you look at healthcare and in general, many of the edge uh, deployments and technologies, uh, there are some key elements that you need to al always consider in terms of the, the architecture. And in, in healthcare specifically, anything that relates into data privacy and, and the um, data anon anonymization, it's one of the key elements for, for healthcare, right? So if you look at the, at, uh, um, on the technologies that we'll be uh, talking through today, so there's a lot of emphasis on, the, on, on how do we treat data, how do we keep data secure, and how do we uh, secure those things with the hardware and software all together, right? And obviously, like the other aspect that happens uh, specifically with, uh, with uh, healthcare is that uh, for the nature of the data, you can get all, all the data, go into the cloud, for example, and do uh, AI learning on, on the data that comes from the hospitals, right? So think like as, as federated learning, where you need to distribute the learning of the models in the different uh, hospital premises, and then com com combine the different models to create one, um, one single model are elements that are fu foundational from the healthcare domain. So um, when you look at the, at the technologies that, that, you, that we are looking, or let's say like the workload or, or foundational uh, microservices or services that, that are usually used in this type of use cases, 
you go from things like natural uh, NLP type of algorithms that you do text-to-speech, uh, um, NLP for processing like questions or stuff like that, or even analyzing the, the voices and the documents. You, you go to computer vision, obviously, like for X-ray analysis. Even when you do like uh, uh, surgery, there are some uh, algorithms that are being trained to identify when there are some objects that go in, in wrong places. And obviously, you have anything that is preventing of, of uh, for forecasting potential uh, uh, adverse events that may happen, right? And, and one of the interesting aspects of, of the healthcare is that there is large amount of data that if you process it in, a, in, a, in, in the right way and you create the right models, they can help substantially in, in optimizing and, and preventing some, some things to happen. So I think for me, one of the interesting aspects in, in this a specific dom domain is that uh, what is the data monetization? It's, go it's going to be uh, very, very important uh, for the healthcare domain in, in general because there's a lot of data that is data, but it's not used for for uh, for things that can basically improve like the our lives, but also like the the logistics on the from the healthcare and uh, hospitals and, and healthcare facilities in in general. So, um, when you look now, connecting a little bit uh, uh, healthcare. The, so I went through a little bit on on different areas from the from the healthcare domain, where like uh, um, compute uh, and AI and techno and this type of technologies can help. We went through a little bit some of the pillars that you may see in terms of the workloads or or foundational microservices that you could use. Now, when you look at the um, edge computing and marrying this with, uh, with the healthcare, why edge can help, right? So I think that one important aspect that I just talked about, it's on the, uh, so we talked about data uh, privacy, we, looked, we talked about uh, federated uh, learning. So you need to have this uh, continuum of, of edge to cloud, because obviously, if you do everything on premises, the, the cost and the, and the OPEX uh, of the deployment is, is high. So you need to have some balance on, on your architecture and see what do you do really on premise and what you can do on the cloud, right? And for doing to that, you have to have orchestration capabilities that look at the, at the problem from end-to-end uh, -end perspective. The other aspect is networking is obviously important. You need to protect the data from the device to where the service that is processing that particular data uh, how the bytes are moving from one place to the to the other, and the o other important aspect is in the and the, on the modularity on, and how you treat each of these individual em elements that create the the whole uh, the whole architecture. One important aspect here to to think about is that when when you look at all these use cases, uh, at, in principle they could look like as a mono, uh, mono, monolithic piece of software. What you will see, and I'm going to talk uh, about that in, in few slides, is that more and more the, the, the use cases or the workloads are getting decomposed in microservices. And that allows you that, that basically some, micro, some parts of the workload that are microservices that maybe are processing or pre-processing some sensitive data, you can do that on-premise. On and maybe the, out, the, the output of that data or, or that microservices that is not, uh, it has no, let, let's call it like critical or or private data, it can go into the cloud, for example, and, and do the second level of processing. And also, like you need to have as well, when you decompose the, 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 these use cases in microservices and then map them into to the proper uh, part of the, of, the, of the tiers of the edge, now you have to have as well orchestration th that provides the right level of, of reliability that is needed in, in this type of use cases. Right? And, and an example is that you can't basically have uh, one patient that is uh, being monitored or, or for, uh, you know, uh, in the ICU or stuff like that, obviously, like the, the monitoring has to be continuous and you have to have failover mechanisms in case like some parts of the, of the, of the architecture, they, they stop working or connectivity does, does not work. And, and here, um, it's, it's important uh, that you need to, uh, at the end of the day, everything is, is a trade-off of, of, of cost and it's a trade-off of, of, uh, of, um, of, of the security and, and privacy that I was just talking about, right? And, and one of the um, important aspects, I, I think, in general, when I see how the ecosystem is moving, as I, as I was saying, like cloud native is becoming more and more uh, relevant for, for, for us, uh, for the work that we do. 
and as I was saying, there's, there's more appetite to leverage like uh, standards and, 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 and leverage as, uh, as, uh, as, as ecosystem the, so the solutions that we, that we work on, and that's why we're like, putting our bet in, in, in Cloud Native. And if you see, I'm, I'm going to talk about the Smart Edge, but we're using uh, uh, CNCF uh, Kubernetes distributions, and we want to basically uh, embrace all these uh, standards that are, are done by the community and contribute with, with our uh, enhancements in, in Kubernetes plugins, Kubernetes operators, and, 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 and things like that. One, one important area of, of, uh, of edge, and especially in the healthcare, is that it's not only about the, the, the compute boxes like a, a, a Dell server or a, a super micro server that runs on premises, but there is one aspect that sometimes we uh, forget about it, which are the, the devices. One of the challenges that we, we see uh, in, in healthcare or in, in, in hospitals in general, is that one of the complex complexities is how you connect all these different types of devices that are part of the of the hospitals, and, and it's not my day-to-day -day job. But when when I talk, for example, I was in in Bangalore uh, one one month ago, and one of the challenges that we that we saw talking with uh, with one one of the hospitals that we are partnering with that. The, they have a lot of brown, uh, brownfield uh, um, devices in, in the hospital, so how you integrate all, all those devices and, and process all the data that they have is one of the uh, big challenges that, that we have today, right? And the, sec the, the second, obviously, is anything that goes related into data privacy, and as, as, as I was just talking about, is how, how, how you really make sure Make sure that the data is processed when it needs to be, and that the that uh, that all 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 that is on uh, is data privacy is, is is secure, right? The the other aspect is is on the on the connectivity. So we have the devices, we have the data privacy, and the other aspect is on the on on the connectivity, right? Uh, so we are looking when uh, from an architectural perspective how we converge different types of of accesses: 5G, 4G, MPLS, Wi-Fi. And all these dif different elements that are part of, of the of these deployments, and and see basically how how you connect like the devices with the services, and and how you make that in a in with a common common architecture. So um, when you look at I don't know guys if you are familiar with uh, Smart Edge Open, so that's something that we we are doing from from Intel perspective. It's a it's a it's a Kubernetes. Uh, uh, based uh, distribution where basically we're trying to provide uh, a framework that you can use to connect, as I was saying a few seconds ago, like different uh, devices with different types of, of connectivity uh, technologies, and then running that on, on obviously Intel platforms and, our, and the hardware that we have, and try to provide some level of, of uh, what we call reference implementations, that these are uh, cloud-native uh, container-based implementations that we have containerized and divided in microservices so that you can get it and basically, uh, or you get the whole thing, or you just get bits and pieces that you need for, for your application. One of the things that we are heavily working on, it's, it's, it's try to see how we are uh, more and more standard with uh, with uh, with the ecosystem. Obviously, when you go into Kubernetes, like Kubernetes APIs are standardized and well understood. But for example, when you go in, into the more appli application part of the of the site and you want to provide microservices, uh, how do you pro how do you expose and, and provide uh, microservices to the to the community? That's something it's not yet clear. I mean, if you look at the definitions of microservices out there are loosely coupled and stuff like that, very, very generic. So we, we are trying to see how we can contribute from the, from the uh, application perspective as well. And that's what you see, like what we call the, the Intel Smart Edge portfolio. So um, when you look at the, at the Smart Edge, uh, the, the way that you can uh, think about it is, as, as, I, as I was saying, you have on the bottom the, the Cloud Native Foundation. But then uh, what we're trying to, to do is, uh, on, on this uh, baseline platform, we are trying to add new building blocks that basically allow uh, you guys to get uh, reduce the time to market for, for using some uh, some types of, of technologies that are needed for the for edge architectures, right? And here, uh, obviously, you have like uh, 
elements of, of, uh, of security, so I'm going to cover that in a second, but uh, you know that we're working on, on SGX, TDX technologies that, that basically uh, protect the, the, the microservices that are running on, on a platform uh, from the hypervisor and, and other, other types of, of attacks. You have all the TPM, which basically is, is the, for doing attestation on the platform so that you, when you boot, uh, bootstrap the system, you know that the system has not been compromised. And obviously, you have all, all, the, all the different elements that we have in our uh, platforms and technology that go from, uh, from telemetry. We have lots of uh, different data that you can collect from the platform, the, from the performance monitoring using uh, unit that you can uh, uh, use via uh, standard tools like uh, Prometheus, Grafana, uh, and, and other types of, of uh, collecting and other types of, of tele telemetry uh, building blocks. And obviously, like anything that goes with, uh, with, uh, with uh, acceleration, right? So there is, in, in, in the context of uh, healthcare, but in edge in general, so uh, element, uh, media, uh, AI are building blocks that are heavily utilized. So we are investing a lot of time on on defining the right level of, of hardware technologies that go from ISAs that are exposed by the CPUs that goes with GPUs that have systolic arrays for inferencing plus media building blocks so that you reduce the, the TCO when you have media plus, um, uh, plus AI type of, of, of workloads or even if you have to do certain types of analytics and you have to use, for example, ABX 512s, that all those things are, are provided as, as building blocks. And basically, when it goes into Kubernetes, so providing the right level of, of uh, Kubernetes plugins, Kubernetes operators, so that you don't really need to ha handle with the complexity of deploying, for example, an Intel GPU, right? So that's something that for, for you, should be more or less transparent so that you get the hardware, you get the, the operators, you get the plugins, and it should be ready to go, and it should be multi-tenant, right? The, on top of these basic building blocks that, that you can get, uh, you can utilize, and you can include in your Kubernetes uh, distribution, uh, we are defining what are the uh, experience kits, okay? And then basically, the experience kits are, um, uh, you can see this as, as a reference impl implementations that they couple together uh, some of these building blocks so that you can deploy them uh, the, the full uh, architecture configured for those experience kits. Examples are the private wireless kit. So what we do, I don't know how much you guys have been uh, working or dealing with integrating different uh, Flex Run or, or uh, Flex Run plus Core just like UPF type of, of architecture, but in general, is something that requires a lot of heavy lifting. So what we do from Intel perspective is provide this um, private wireless kit that it's, it's something that you get, you can deploy in your Kubernetes distribution and you will have a set of uh, run slash flex run uh, technologies plus uh, UPF that you can get and, and deploy into, into your, your system. Something important is, uh, well, and when uh, on top of that, you have the edge services, that these are the, the microservices that I was talking about. So, for example, there is um, some, something that is called the, the LStreamer pipeline server. There is a microservices, a microservice that we provide. There is, uh, is a microservice that you can deploy in your, in your edge node. And you, what you do, you have RESTful APIs that you can register the, the pipeline that you want to process that may have I don't know, uh, detection plus uh, classification. And then you, using the same RESTful API, you, you can register different streams of cameras, right? And that basically, uh, and you will get the, the, the result of, the, of that pipeline for that stream. And you don't have to basically know what hardware is underneath and, and how that's managed. It, 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 this is done by that uh, microservice, right? And you have or other edge services like that net ne network functions, uh, stuff from media and, and AI, so that you can uh, basically um, leverage all the stuff underneath in a, in a more uh, transparent way. So, um, well, obviously, as I was saying, so the, this is just a snippet on, on what could go within, a, within a, the Smart Edge uh, uh, developer experience kit that includes uh, um, element that go into the into the Kubernetes master, uh, obviously then on the edge node, and we provide different optimized uh, CNIs. We provide different optimized Kubernetes uh, plugins, Kubernetes operators, and this is something that you can get and, and install into your system uh, from I mean, uh, from, uh, from 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 scratch. Basically, we provide all the Ansible scripts that do that allow you to have uh, to boot and, and configure a system 
in questions of of a uh, uh, of, of few uh, few few minutes. You can. This is uh, so. The, this is on uh, open source, so that it's on the GitHub, so you can access to it. You can download it, and and you can. Uh, test it out in, into your systems. It's, uh, you will see that there are some of the experience kits which uh, require uh, some uh, more um, uh, uh, agree well, contracts, let's say, with, uh, with a smart edge open, but everything is something that you can, you can uh, download. As, as you will see, so th there are lots of, of building blocks here that they are open source components. We don't have to reinvent the wheel, so as I said, so the, the the, the aim is to be as much just uh, aligned with the, with the ecosystem, so you will see that basically there are, there are a lot of things that are open source, but the work that we do is basically being sure that uh, we provide the, the right level of, of, uh, of new elements so that we can expose the, the benefits of our platforms and into, the, in, into this uh, uh, open source uh, building block. So for example, in terms of uh, Prometheus, so we have the we provide the right level of, of Prometheus exporters for the hardware that we have, the telemetry, so that this is something that can be used for uh, orchestration. So um, the the other aspect is okay. Now going into the into the implementation of the applications. So I don't know how much you guys are familiar with OpenVINO, but basically OpenVINO is an AI framework that you can utilize uh, uh, for doing uh, developing and training your your building, uh, your uh, NNs, and you can optimize them on top of Intel hardware, and then you can deploy them in your in your in your system architecture, right? And that's something that you can do uh, using the DR Streamer pipeline server that I was mentioning, or you can use all other microservices such as Open Open Vino, or Open Vino model server. That this is the the one uh, the microservice that you can get basically and put your um, uh, your models in this in this model server, and you get everything uh, 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 optimized within the within the same within the same container. One important aspect again is uh, when it comes into the deployment. So I'm, I'm going to say again, container, container, container. So we're really looking into into this microservice uh, kind of uh, foundation because uh, that that allow, allows you to take benefit of all the Kubernetes constructs for auto scaling. Uh, for service meshes and stuff like that, which is something that you need for when when you need to deploy uh, flexible uh, and, and more scalable architectures. And in this case, the, op, the the model server is something that you can use for implementing your own applications, and that we are heavily utilizing in this in this healthcare domain as a, a as, as a building block that you can use for doing the 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 media and, and AI uh, inferencing. Something important that this, uh, when, you, when you use this type of microservices, you don't necessarily need to know what hardware is underneath. So that's something that the microservice take, takes care of. And the beauty of that is that now you have the same, uh, the same application that can go from a, from a NUC that has core to another platform that has Xeon and Xeon SP using AI uh, ISA optimized, or you can go into another uh, platform that has uh, Xeon D plus GPU, right? And that's going to be abstracted to your application. So, um, in the cont now uh, connecting all the things together, right? So, uh, what we have done, and and we will provide a little bit more of uh, uh, reference at the at the end. So now you connect all these different pieces on the Intel hardware, the Smart Edge Open, and the different uh, uh, services or microservices that are meant. Uh, to optimize and, and reduce the time to market for the application uh, for the application development plus the connectivity part of the of the architecture, and now you can connect all the different elements to make the end-to-end -end architecture, right? And in this case, that goes um, as I said at the beginning. It can go from the patient sample scanner, do, doing that into training models that gets deployed into the edge servers, and that implements uh, the specific use cases that are needed for the uh, for the for the digital pathology, pathology in this case, from to be used by the by the by the uh, doctors on on hospitals. So um, the the other uh, important aspect is is how you do now. So that we have the end-to-end -end architecture is how you manage and do the service orchestration at at the scale, right? So. Uh, what we are looking with uh, with the smart edge open as well is how you do the lifecycle management of those applications. And as I said at the beginning, you need to look at things like reliability, data privacy, 
and, and all these uh, different elements. So what we look at from a smart edge open perspective is that you can do the lifecycle management in a secure way from, from each of these uh, microservices and basically that you can connect all the different premises that are part of, the, of, a, of a healthcare infrastructure. And the other aspect will leverage things like a, a one API rendering toolkit, for example, to, to visualize the, the results of, of, an, of automate, uh, automatic analysis on, on digital pathology, for example. So the idea is that you can get all, all these different uh, building blocks to, to create uh, the end-to-end -end, uh, system architecture. So um, when, when you look at the, uh, um, uh, again, like at, the, at, at what we are looking um, from, from the system architecture perspective, we are also looking at, at the interplay uh, within the, the, the premise and, and, the, and the cloud. So you will see that when, if you get deeper into, into what we are pro providing with the Smart Edge Open, you will see that we have connectors to the uh, cloud service provider to, to offload part of the, uh, of the metadata or even like some uh, training into the into the into the into the cloud domain, so you will see that there is it's a combination of, of private public cloud uh, on premise device uh, combination so that we really connect all the different pieces that, that are part of a, of a healthcare deployment so um, you you will as I said at the beginning, uh, we are providing reference implementations that basically are meant to uh, provide a full implementation of specifics use cases, so you, if you look at the smart edge, you will have, I, I see this in, in two different ways. So one that is more on the, on the, on the core services or infra and service orchestration, and the second one is on the implementation of the use cases that you can get one or the other, right, or, or both. So in, if you go into something that is called the Edge Software Hub that we provide, so you can download, for example, this use case on, on remote patient uh, monitoring and, 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 and telemedicine. So basically, it's an end-to-end -end use, end -end use case that provides implementation of uh, stream processing from, uh, from a, um, a, a patient in the, in, a, in the hospital. It provides as well uh, X-ray analysis to identify uh, different potential pathologies on, a, on, on the patient, and it provides as well the, the interaction with a, with, with, a, with a nurse or with a doctor through, through, through the edge, edge connectivity. Similarly, you will, have, uh, we, you will see that we are um, working on, on this domain heavily, in, in, by a matter of fact, now, and now we're uh, looking with colleagues like Prashant in how do we do federated learning at a scale. One of the challenges that you will see today in the, in the healthcare domain is that there is a lot of data out there, and, but again, there is a lot of sensitivity uh, and on the data privacy, right? And, and basically, one of the challenges is, for example, can we do digital twins? P probably yes, we have the right technology, we have the right uh, models, we have the right uh, software assets, but what, what, what is the, the, the frontier and how you keep like, the, the data um, and the data privacy in, in, in you know, uh, to, the, to, to the end user, right? And then other things that we were heavily working on, on, on hardware-based security, and that includes on how, how you can protect uh, models that may, may uh, uh, identify uh, certain uh, pathologies, uh, how you can do uh, private 5G deployments in, in healthcare domains, and how you can uh, help into the, for example, in the connectivity of all those devices that I was telling on, at the beginning. So healthcare is in general a, a very big, big area that I, I think it's gonna it's gonna grow uh, over the next uh, few years. And even I'm focusing on in the horizontal edge architecture from uh, network and, and edge division. I think that uh, healthcare is a, is a very interesting one, uh, and, and it, it's gonna grow substantially over the over the next few years. So, um, as I said, check out their in reference implementations on, on a smart edge open. You can go into the edge software hub. Uh, here today I presented on, on, on healthcare, but we, we, we do stuff around transportation and, and transportation uh, safety and, and the other verticals. So you will find multiple reference implementations that you can, that you can uh, access and use. And, and if you and obviously you have like edge software cloud, uh, cloud as well that you can test some of the hardware that we we are uh, developing. 
So another reference implementation, telepathology, you can download it and, and you can uh, try it out and, and obviously you can ask for, for, for support if, if there is any, any, anything that, uh, that needs to be improved or any bugs, obviously we, we provide support to that. So um, I think that um, I'm just on, on time uh, in case uh, you guys uh, have any questions. If it's on healthcare, uh, I'll, I'll try to do my best uh, to answer. But in general, any question on what we presented, uh, uh, edge, any, just feel free. You have to go to the mic and ask. But, um, but that's, that was uh, for today. I don't know if any question. Good? Okay. So, I guess that, that's it.